Hello, and depending on where you are joining us from, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Issa Massey, and I will be your host and moderator today. And on behalf of the entire Densply of Sharona family, I would like to give you a warm welcome to our first major announcement of the year. Today is not just about announcing new products, although that's going to be a big part of today's announcements. Today is about much, much more. Over the next hour, we are going to introduce you to an exciting new future vision at Dents by Serona, one that puts the needs of our customers at the epicenter of everything that we do by providing them with smarter solutions that make their lives easier. We are making a commitment to the future of digital dentistry, one that is built around your growth, your needs, and the needs of your patients. We want you to become more productive, more accurate, more collaborative, and more connected, so you can spend more time doing the thing that matters most, giving your patients the best care possible. So, with that being said, we have none other than our fearless leader and CEO, Don Casey, here to elaborate more on what this future of digital dentistry means with Densify Serona. Don, where are you? Hey, I'm right here, man. Super pumped up and ready to talk about the future. Are you psyched? Come on, man. You're gonna leave me hanging here? Oh, no way. I'm super pumped to have you here, man. Thank you so much. Well, hey, we already started talking a little bit about what this uh, transformation might mean for us, but please give us some insight into what this future of digital dentistry is gonna mean for Dents by Serona. Actually, you know, it's interesting. I wouldn't start with what it's gonna mean for Dents by Serona. I'd start, what is it gonna mean for our dentists? all over the world. What is it gonna mean for our lab partners? It means that we are going to take the next jump and we're gonna take so much of what we've seen in digitization and all sorts of other industries and apply it to dental. What do I mean by that? Look, we have been on the forefront at Dents Ply Serona of digitizing lots of things. So think about PrimeScan, think about Orthophos, Galileos, all these things where we've brought digital assets to dentistry. And what does that mean? It means that we can do better diagnostic and increasingly we can use things like treatment planning that's assisted with AI to help the dentist validate a diagnostic, really help things like sure smile and treatment planning, help plan implants. But now we're gonna take it to a whole new level. We basically have thought about digitization today about isolated machines. You know, you have a prime scan over here, you have an orthophos over here, you know, that's all gonna go away. What we are going to do is basically power up digital dentistry in a way that nobody's ever thought about. And by that, I mean we are literally going to be able to take images from where they're literally right at the chair side. We're going to be able to push them anywhere around the world. We can push it to a lab. You can share it with a specialist. You can share it with your patient. You can access this from anywhere, and not only are you going to get the amazing clarity and the diagnostic sophistication of these outstanding products that Densply Serona is going to do, we're now going to back it by a powerful engine that's going to be available anytime, anywhere, any place in a completely secure, medically graded security way that's just, I think, gonna be transformative. So it's gonna allow dentists all over the world to partner with specialists and labs to approach more complex cases, approach it with confidence, deliver better patient outcomes, and really change the efficiency of the office because literally it's going to almost power the office in a totally new way. So super excited about this. And it's hard for us to get excited at Dentist Place Come on, we invented dental x-rays. I mean, so many things that we've done. We were the first people to put a CAD CAM picture with an orthophos picture with the CBCT. I mean, we've done this before, but you know what? We've never put it all together in such a way that I think is totally transformative. Don, I mean, this sounds unbelievable. This is all really exciting because like you said, we are going to transform the way the dentists and labs and ultimately patients experience things in the future. Um, to dive in on that a little bit more, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of implications to our software and like our digital landscape as a result. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Our hardware at Densply Serona has been breakthrough in so many different areas. But today we're announcing a partnership with Google that I think is gonna be transformative in how we think about our software. You know, historically we thought about, there's a machine, you know, there's a PCP board and a lot of the diagnostic is done there and it's done in the office. 
it ignores the power of creating a network and it ignores what we could do. So when we said, all right, look, we've got to create an entire ecosystem built on digital diagnostics that you can take those diagnostics and share them, store them, move them, and it's transformative. But we said, hey, look, while we're really good at that, we wonder if there's a partner that we could go out with and that could jumpstart an entirely new way of thinking about cloud, thinking about AI, thinking about software development, and who better than Google. So we are incredibly proud to be collaborating with Google in a whole new way that's gonna allow dentists all over the world to store imaging, share imaging, push it into diagnostics, push it to a lab, push it to a specialist. We're gonna be able to do that at an economical rate and it's be going to be done because it's Google in a secure way that's gonna be appropriate for every location around the world. So you may be sitting in an office and you're gonna be able to access it from a treatment center, you're gonna be access on the laptop, you may be home working at night and you're gonna be able to pick up the imaging and look at it. You're gonna be able to correspond with labs and other people instantly, securely, in a way that I think is gonna blow people away. If you think about you know, just how Google has changed the world in so many different ways. You remember, it was like a search engine and then there was YouTube and all this stuff. I can program an iPhone and today I, I hit YouTube and I can figure it out. So I get very, very excited about this collaboration, this partnership, because I think it's gonna bring extraordinary benefits of collaboration and connectivity into our software design and it's gonna allow us to really crank it up because we've got such a great partner with such a great platform that's gonna really simplify our approach to software and allow us to create a single user interface that we think is transformative. That's unbelievable. I mean, it's so exciting to hear that such uh, experts in, in their respective fields are actually coming together to create a new world for uh, dentists and labs and ultimately patients everywhere. Um, to that point, I mean, I think that there's always a process of development that has to happen in making these things uh, become a reality. Um, how do you see this uh, overall vision evolving over time? Well, look, you know, we, we have 100 years of history in, in evolving, but when you're going to start moving into the speed of digital that we've seen in so many, like in B2C and B2B areas and even how social media has evolved, we know that we have to change our approach. We're going to have to be able to rapidly innovate. So look, I, first, we have a great partnership that's going to allow us to incrementally innovate on a very, very consistent basis. So historically, we've been a company that's Bam, here's prime scan. Whoosh. And then five years later, there would be another big piece of equipment. <clears throat> what we're saying today is, no, 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 no. The, the machines are incredibly important, and they're always going to set the standard for diagnostic accuracy and ease of use. But what we're saying now, we think we can change the game because the software is going to provide more and more power to these diagnostics. And as well, we're gonna start bringing AI. And you know, it's gonna change our approach with rather than have just a giant reveal, it's gonna be incremental innovation. And just look at Google. Again, I kind of referenced this a minute ago, where we started with, yeah, there was a search engine, right? And then there was Google Maps. And if you look at the ecosystem today, you never really realized how integral it is to your life until, wow, you look at it, and it was all done incrementally. So look, today we're super excited. We're announcing a partnership. It, it really, we believe, is gonna transform the idea of software that's related to a specific piece of equipment and it's gonna be creating an ecosystem that we think is gonna make dentist lives a lot better. It's more efficiency, it's easier. We think it's much more cost effective. But more importantly, it's gonna allow us to do things where every single month there's gonna be an innovation. And before you know it, this ecosystem will literally transform how people are going to practice dentistry. And then when you think about it, we're excited because we're announcing our first piece of equipment that's really gonna take advantage of this, which is our prime print product, which we are unbelievably excited about. So again, um, it, it's hard to really overestimate how excited our entire team is because look, we invented digital x-ray, we invented scanning, now we think we're inventing the digital future. Wow, that sounds unbelievable. And I just wanted to take a moment to just recognize that you just said we're releasing a new 3D printer. That sounds amazing. Can you tell us more about that? Hey, Prime Print, it, we are really, really excited about it. Uh, you know, typically we would have launched this at something like a Chicago midwinter, and now with the pandemic, we're going to do it virtually. So today, for the first time, we're starting to talk about Prime Print. It is an amazing product in terms of ease of use. 
in terms of it's a medical grade. It has apps that are gonna be transformative for the dentist because literally uh, with a, a 3D printer in there, a night guard, you're gonna be able to do splints, surgical guides, you're gonna be able to make a model and you're gonna be able to do it easily and we're introducing a whole service suite that goes along with this. So if you wanna do the design, great. If you want us to do the design or our lab partners do the design, great. Uh, we are offering something that is transformative because look, there's some printers out there that are good in dental. Nobody started with the idea that how do we build a 3D printer that's instantly integrated to the Dentsply Serona network and provides incredible ease of use, safety. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am. As a matter of fact, my entire office at this point is filled with things that were all 3D printed. And it's amazing. I, you show people this stuff and they're like, where'd that come from? So again, if you think about what we're doing with software, you think about our Google partnership, and this is just the first of, I think, will be an unparalleled set of introductions over the next 18 to 24 months that I think literally will reset the bar of digital dentistry all around the world. Wow. Well, Don, I just want to say one more time from the bottom of all of our hearts, thank you so much for uh, giving us some of your time and getting us all really uh, excited. Uh, to learn uh, uh, no, this, is, hey, this, is, this is easy for me. I, I just get to look at all the cool stuff this team has designed. I'd actually like to thank first our customers because we have been working with them to make sure everything we're launching works seamlessly and is as transformative as, as possible. But the other thing is, the engineers and the software capabilities that we now have in the organization, I gotta thank those guys because today they finally get their coming out party and it is gonna be a big bang. Right on. I think it might be a really good time to learn a little bit more about this product, no? Oh, let's go. So once again, thanks so much, Don. It's always a pleasure to have you. Definitely look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm really excited to introduce our next speaker. She has traveled all over the world visiting dental offices to understand what dentists really need from a 3D printing solution, making her our expert in 3D printers. So, Alyssa Riddle, I don't exactly know where you are, but it looks really cool. Perhaps you wonder why I am here today. Well, this is the door to our secret laboratories where we're working on all the exciting solutions that we want to bring to you. We did plenty of market research. We talked to dentists, we talked to lab technicians, and we really wanted to understand what are the pain points in 3D printing and how does the solution need to look like in order to meet your needs. A solution that is completely thought through and is actually part of a larger universe. To make this simple, a solution that deserves the label Prime. I'm extremely honored and thrilled to share this moment with you today and lift the curtain. So are you ready to take a look behind our secret door? What's the code again? I'm just joking. Of course it scans my face. Impressive, Mr. Prime. Arriving late in a time machine. Bravo. Well, on my watch, it's prime time. Let's get on with your brief, shall we? As I'm sure you're aware, Mr. Prime, 3D printing is nothing new, even in dentistry. But until now, the whole business has been somewhat, let's say, analog. I'm glad to say that we've done nothing less than revolutionize the whole category. We developed a completely new 3D printing process that combines DLP printing technology with intuitive software, a broad range of validated material, innovative algorithms, and fully automated post-processing. Ah, that sounds fantastic. Not to worry, Mr. Prime. Everything will soon become clear. See for yourself. You're looking at the inside of the machine itself, or rather a digital simulation of it, that helps to understand the new process. Let's start with the printing process, the creation of the actual physical application. Whoa! <laughs> Ooh. This viscous liquid is resin. Fascinating stuff. Mm. Very reactive. So reactive that we can convert it 
layer by layer into a hard material, just by shining a light onto it from below. Wow. That's just like magic. Isn't it just? But the real game changer is still to come. Whoa! Post-processing is just as important as the printing process itself. The printed object is designed for clinical application. Therefore, it's essential to eliminate any trace of the reactive resin. Which means our application needs a wash. I see. So, it's like a car wash. Well, if you drove your car into a whirlpool filled with highly concentrated isopropanol solution, and then you did it again, just to make sure, then yes, it's exactly like a car wash. The next step speaks for itself, I think. Air drying! So, how many steps again in total? We're almost done. But for the next one, you'll need your shades. Yeah. Oh. Not too bad. Ready? Always. Action. <laughs> These lights make sure to convert any last monomers of resin into polymers. I knew you'd like this bit. Monomers? Polymers? Everything you've seen, Mr. Prime, fits into these two devices, along with an ingenious software, of course. Oh, that's impressive. May I? Sure. <laughs> Just press fast forward already. Of course. After all, I am the expert. My watch is right. It's prime time. So as we've just heard, it's prime time again. Or to be more precise, it's prime print time. I am really excited to share with you our latest solution today and what will be a major step in digital dentistry for practices and laboratories alike. But I don't want to talk about prime print all by myself today, but was able to get some support. Coming directly from Orono, Minnesota, one of our biggest key opinion leaders at Dentsplice Rona. Welcome, Dr. Mike Scramstead. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. Pleasure is mine, Mike. Would you mind helping us turning the light back on? Absolutely. Well, that didn't work. So, Mike, you've been testing these two guys for quite some time now. Before you share your experiences, why don't we have the audience have a look at where you normally work? Sure. So I practice in Orno, Minnesota, which is a suburb of Minneapolis. Uh, here is my front desk and reception area. So we built 13 operatories and really with the vision of surrounding our office with technology. So with Dance by Serona's help, we've surrounded our whole entire office with uh, the proper technology to be successful. And here is our newest piece of technology, the Prime Print. Congrats, Mike, to such an amazing office. Looks really nice. Well, flipping it back to Prime Print now, as said, you've been a beta tester for quite some time. So tell us, what are your first thoughts and impressions? 
uh, it's really been an eye-opening experience just to see how smart, simple, and safe 3D printing can be. Uh, it's really the easiest way to 3D print. And I think after today, those who are looking at 3D printing are going to feel confident that the prime print is the right solution to take that first step. I'm really happy to hear that you had such an outstanding experience right from the start. I mean, you know this already, but I have to confess, I'm a grinder at night. So uh, would you mind providing me with a new night guard today? Sure. Um, obviously, we don't have time to do a proper appointment now. So we went ahead and we scanned Elisa's arch yesterday. And we used the splint design software to go ahead and make her a new splint. So should we get started? Yes, let's walk over. So what I really love the most about the prime print is it's a simple four-step process to complete the part. Ensuring a simple process throughout the full 3D printing workflow was very important to us. Ultimately, printing should increase the productivity of your practices and labs. So it was crucial to us to, on the one side, make this as efficient and reliable for you as possible, but on the other side, also ensure that you don't need to be a printing expert to operate the system. So let's go ahead and look at step number one. So as you can see, Elisa's splint has been automatically uploaded into the new CAM22 software. And the software is intuitive enough where it even knows the correct resin on the right-hand side for that particular job. On the bottom part of the screen, we have what we call the fast forward button. By simply clicking that arrow, it brings you to the production screen. Now in the production screen, the software is going to position that part and the production structures to automatically optimize for success. So one click, complete automation. And that's what we call dental intelligence. So we used all the know-how that Dentsply Serona has collected over the years when it comes to designing patient-specific appliances. We used it and we built it into the CAM to make it as easy as possible for staff to run through the job preparation. So Mike, how long does this step take normally for you? Well, depending on what I'm printing, if it's you know, a surgical guide, a provisional, a splint, or a model, anywhere from 20 seconds to two minutes. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. So Lisa, would you like to print your splint? Yes, please. All right, so to start the printing process, all you need to do is click on the Start Production button. As soon as you do that, the software will begin printing immediately. Fantastic, so this will not even take half an hour now for printing, but uh, nevertheless, Mike, shall we go over and while this is printing, we'll have a look at the details on step number two? Sure. So what we can see here is actually the full prime print solution, including the software, the hardware, the consumables, and all the accessories that are needed for the workflow. Over there, where Mike is standing, this is prime print, and this is prime print PPU, the post-processing unit. So something that I would like to show you is this one here. It's the prime print cartridge, and it actually contains the resin. What I find is really clever is the material is completely sealed all the way. So you're never in touch with the material, meaning there's no mess. It's a really easy handling process. It's very comfortable to move from one material to the other, and it ensures a very smooth process. The second piece that I would like to introduce is Prime Print Box. And I know it looks pretty simple, but it's actually more than just a container. This is the reason why you never have to touch an unfinished object, because you move it around from A to B in this contained environment here until it's 100% finished and safe to handle. OK, so let's see how this works. So, with each one of these material cartridges, it's going to be color-coded, so you're always going to know which one is which, and there's never really a possibility to get confused. So what we're going to do with this material cartridge is we're going to insert it in the material unit. So it's going to very easily click right into place, and once these two are together, they'll always be paired. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and place this into the prime print. Now again, this material unit just very easily slides in and locks into place. You hear a little audible click, and now the unit's in the prime print. Now the coolest thing about this is each one of these material units has an RFID code. You might have noticed as soon as I put this in, the prime print automatically recognized what resin was inside. So 
Now, in my office in the past, a lot of my staff was super afraid to 3D print because they always thought they were going to make a mistake and then they're going to have to come tell me that something went wrong. And now, when the prime print knows exactly what resin is in there at all time, it's really impossible to make a mistake. And it's given my staff the confidence to take a bigger role in 3D printing in my office. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place the prime print box into the prime print. We'll close the door and the printing will begin. Now as the resin starts to flow out, the coolest thing is, is the prime print knows exactly the amount of resin needed for every job that you do. So this is going to ensure that you get the very most out of your cartridge. Next, the unit's going to print layer by layer. And here we'd like to provide you with some technology details. Our printer is using a 385 nanometer DLP light engine that ensures fast printing times and is also the reason for the great results in terms of accuracy and precision. This ensures an incredible performance across a broad range of resins in a fully automated workflow. It also has a plus that I would like to mention. It has an active coal filter built in, so there's literally no need for an additional suction unit. So I think we can go to step three. Now, we previously printed a splint for Elisa. So there's your splint. You can see it looks absolutely perfect. There's just one more thing we need to do, and that's the post-processing. So to start the post-processing, it's very easy. All we have to do is open the door, place it in, close, and then hit start. I think we can actually proudly say that our post-processing unit is very unique. As we can see here, we have a robotic arm moving the printed object automatically throughout the different steps. So here we can see washing cycle number one. And then from here, it gets automatically moved into the washing cycle number two to ensure that all the resin that is not needed anymore is gone. So now we're straight into air blowing it. And once this step is completed, we can see the light curing taking place. Something that is also special about our post-processing unit is actually that it measures the purity of the alcohol. So there's no guesswork involved anymore. The unit will tell you when it's time to exchange it for fresh alcohol. Also, what I would like to mention is that the containers are also color-coded, so there's no cross-contamination between one resin or the other, which also ensures a smooth process, especially when you work with different materials. So I think, yeah. In general, we can say we sort of build a laboratory in a box here because everything you need for post-processing is included in that one single machine, also including, just as the prime print itself, an active coal filter. So this is really a thought-through environment guaranteeing medical outcomes as it was developed in line with the FDA's considerations for additive manufactured medical devices. So with this being said, I think we're almost at the end of the process. So Mike, um, if I can ask you, what are your highlights about prime print? What would be your answer? So I think the first thing that comes to mind is I love the fact that every single person in my office can use the prime print. So here is a picture of my assistant Natalia with her very first guide printed in the prime print just days after we got it. So my staff loves it. They love the fact that they never have to wear any gloves. They never have to touch resin. They never have to touch alcohol. They never have to worry if the right resin is in the prime print or if the alcohol needs to be changed in the PPU. They, you know, the, the days of looking at a tank of alcohol and saying, is this dirty? Is this clean? I'm not quite sure, so let's just keep on using it. You know, those days are over. So just the simple predictability that both of these units give my staff is a huge plus in my office. Now, for me as a clinician, the thing that I like the best is the safety of the parts. You know, as 3D printing evolves, we're getting more and more and putting permanent parts into our patients' mouths. And if I'm going to do that, if I'm giving them something that they're going to wear every day, I want to make sure that it's cured properly. I want to make sure it's washed properly. I want to make sure it's safe for my patients. So that, from a clinician standpoint, is the thing that I like the best. Um, so let's take a look at the fourth and final step. So we already have a splint that has been post-processed. It's ready to go. So if I take the build plate out of the prime print box, 
you can see that everything is fully washed, fully cured. There's no excessive alcohol or resin. You can actually touch it without any gloves and it's almost ready to go immediately. The only thing you have to do in this case is remove the splint from the build plate, remove the supports, give it a little polish, and you're ready to bring it to your patient. So patient, we have your splint ready. Why don't you go ahead and try it in? Thank you. So let's have a look. Looks pretty good, so let's give it a try. Yeah, actually, it's a perfect fit. Thanks a lot. I'll take that home with me. Fits Thank perfect you. every time. So, Mike, this is clearly not your first printing job. So tell me, how many jobs have you done? So we've done a, a couple hundred jobs between models and splints and guides and provisionals. It, it's not only the accuracy that's impressive, but the extremely low learning curve and the predictability. It's just been a wonderful experience for myself and my staff. And all of this in just four simple steps. And we went through all of them today. So we started with the fast forward button over at the software, ensuring the printed job gets easily transferred to the printer. We've then loaded the printer and let it print. Afterwards, loaded the post-processing unit and ensured it's properly washed and cured before we went into the fourth step, which was the finalization. So a simple, fully automated process, ensuring outstanding results for your patients. So let me summarize what we've seen today. A 3D printing solution with dental intelligence software, an outstanding printer, and a state-of-the-art post-processing unit. I can proudly say that Dentsply Rona is looking very much forward to bringing this solution into dental offices and laboratories all around the world. But as said earlier today, our focus in the future will be heavily on software and services. So we don't leave it with just the equipment, but there will be additional offerings coming with PrimePrint. One is a state-of-the-art, cloud-based design service for ready-to-print design files. This will open a whole new chapter when it comes to the collaboration between dentists and lab technicians, with Dentsply Serona being the platform provider here. So this design service will make in-house production accessible to the majority of dentists who in the past haven't wanted to change the way they work to accommodate software-based design work. So instead of changing their workflows, they can simply rely on the trusted expertise of lab partners. Mike, what do you think about that? Well, design services for many will allow a lower learning curve, give peace of mind, it is really perfect for those who want to minimize changes to their existing workflows. For me personally, I like in-house design, but I really look forward to collaborating with my laboratory through design services for the more complex designs and indications. Thanks a lot for sharing your opinion on that, Mike. And with this, I think it's time to say thank you. It was great having you here with us in that session. So thanks a lot for introducing PrimePrint with me. I hope we got all of you excited for PrimePrint. So stay tuned for more information that is to come over the next couple of weeks. And with this being said, we can close the session, and I'm handing it back. Wow, Elisa, Mike, that was amazing. Thank you so much for showing us the new 3D printing solutions and the prime print. Super exciting stuff there, guys. Um, definitely put me down for one. I, I think I could definitely use that. Um, so hey, guys, if you're like me, I'm sure you're wondering, what does this Google and Densply Serona collaboration actually mean for me, right? So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next two guests uh, with us today to give you guys a lot more insight into that, uh, and definitely more insight than I could ever give you. So, first, we have with us on the stage today, my colleague and friend, Max Mills. Hi, it's uh, good to see you, how are you? Good to see you as well. Thank you so much for making it today. Max is going to be our leader on uh, digital platforms and solutions. Also joining us all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, we have the Chief Technical Officer of Google Cloud, Urs Hosle. Urs, how are you? Good morning, everyone. Good I am morning. great. Good morning. Yeah, actually, and to that point, um, really appreciate you making the time today. I know it's uh, super early for you, so we really appreciate it. So before we jump into things, I'd love to start with just getting a little bit more uh, information from you about your background. You were one of the first employees at Google. How was that? Uh, that's right. Uh, so hi, uh, Isa, hi, Max. Uh, hi, everyone. 
Uh, thanks for having me uh, here today. Uh, yes, indeed, I started in Google uh, uh, in 1999. Uh, it was a small, uh, very small company. I actually interviewed in the garage literally uh, way back. And really my first job was to fix things because uh, originally I thought I didn't really have a role at Google because I didn't know anything about search at the time. And, and But I quickly realized that actually it was an infrastructure problem and an infrastructure company. And, you know, at the time there was no cloud. You couldn't buy really cloud infrastructure. Data centers were actually pretty new things as things you could rent. And so really we spent probably the first five or eight years at Google uh, spending a lot of our effort, not on search, but on building infrastructure because that was really what was uh, getting in the way uh, sometimes, you know, it's the hardware. I, I remember, you know, one time we, we had everyone in the office go to the data center in the evening to cable up uh, a bunch of racks that we had gotten and that we really needed online the next week. But a lot of time was also the software, right? We, we just couldn't have storage that scaled or, or compute that scaled. And so it was really a lot about building infrastructure uh, in parallel with doing search. but but actually probably more important and, and harder than, than doing the search. And, and today, of course, with cloud, and I'm actually very happy that that now enables every company to do uh, whatever they want pretty much without going through the pretty painful experience that we had uh, 20 years ago. Right on. Well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for that insight and background. I mean, I think all of us can agree that the work that you and your teams did has revolutionized the world for all of us. So um, kudos to that. And obviously, I think like we're really excited to have you here um, to give us some of that insight when it comes into this collaboration. So with that being said, kicking it over to you, Max. Um, I know we've uh, heard from Don, for example, about what digital dentistry might mean for us. And we hear that word being thrown around a lot, digital dentistry, digitalization. But from your perspective as the leader of our digital platforms and solutions, what does digital dentistry mean for you and for Dents by Serona moving forward? Thanks, Isa. And hi, Oris. Really great to have you with us. I, I think if you compare digital dentistry to some of the things that actually Urs was talking about, you'll find a lot of parallels, right? You talked about, okay, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be connected, there's a lot of software, sometimes this doesn't work, sometimes that doesn't work. So of course there is a lot of digital stuff in dentistry already, but it just doesn't connect so easily with each other, and it's not optimized for the experience of the user. I think Urs, you said, uh, we enable every company to do whatever they want, and I think for us it's about enabling every dentist to do whatever they want. And dentists want to focus on treating their patients. They do not want to focus on connecting rack PCs, learning difficult software, importing, exporting files. They just want to focus on what they're best at, and that's treating patients. And it's our job to enable that, and that's why we decided to work together with Google to say, hey, can we bring a similar revolution to dentistry? Right on. So actually, kicking that uh, same idea back over to you, Urs, um, when it comes to this collaboration between Google Cloud and Densply Serona, what is your vision for the future? Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, things in common, you know, because at Google, our mission is to organize information, and, and that's why we're working uh, with our customers too, to help them organize information. And that's really what Max said is, is what's here. You know, can we put together an experience to improve the lives of both the dentists and their patients and also their experience. And so if you talk about digital dentistry, it's really underpinned by information, by data, you know, images, 3D models, and making that data useful, making it easy to access, making the dentist not think about IT and processing, but just actually about the experience they're uh, providing to the patients, the, the things we want to do, that's really important and then of course just like with google putting this in a secure place so that really it is private to the dentist and the the, the patient is is super important and so when it came to finding a partner in the uh, oral healthcare uh, space for dentistry we were really uh, struck by how similar the vision was between what uh, dentsply wants it to do and and what really uh, Google is about, you know, organizing information, making it accessible securely uh, to everyone. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, a great partnership here because Densefly Serona has actually pioneered 
a lot in the digital uh, dentistry. And I think the problem of taking all that technology, really creating new experiences, new possibilities, but hiding the complexity from the dentist's office through uh, cloud-based uh, uh, digital information is, is really what, what excites me. Amazing. So, I mean, actually, you mentioned the infrastructure uh, a few times when communicating about, like, you know, this vision as well as, like, what you did at, uh, at Google in the beginning. And um, for all of us, I mean, I'm not necessarily the most tech savvy, so sometimes these ideas go a little bit over my head. But as the expert in infrastructure, I think it would be really great if you gave us a little bit more insight into what infrastructure means in this situation and how a, a, a solid infrastructure will enable that future and that vision that you've just described. Sure. Um, so infrastructure is, is actually what sort of underpins other activities or other experiences. And so, you know, in the context of a country, infrastructure could be roads and bridges so that traffic works. And so in the context of information processing, infrastructure is first sort of a physical layer, you know, cloud data centers, networks, uh, uh, storage systems, etc. That just keep your stuff and can run it. But more importantly, it's also uh, a, a way to really connect and analyze and process uh, all of this data to create new applications to create uh, new experiences. And so it's really the layer that you need uh, to build, for example, digital workflows in a dentistry space or to, to visualize a 3D model. You know, it doesn't rotate by itself. Somewhere you have to do the processing, somewhere you have to store the, 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 the original, uh, you know, 3D image or, or take a number of 2D images and, and, and process them together into 3D image. And so infrastructure really stands behind that. And last but not least, you know, some of that infrastructure is really physical, you know, data centers, servers, uh, networking lines, including the connection to the last mile where, where the connectivity is to the dentist. And then, but really a lot of it is about software infrastructure, making it easier to develop applications, making it easier to validate, for example, that machine learning models are fair and, and unbiased and, and still correct as you update them, or that software that you build can actually be securely delivered to the dentist's office without there being a chance of it being modified by, by some malicious actor. So all of that infrastructure is really what comes from our side and then hopefully uh, through that collaboration, we get really amazing experiences uh, uh, at the dentist level, so to speak, through the software applications that Densplight uh, Serona is, is producing. Great. So I think like some of the things that you, that really stood out for me were um, the, your descriptions on how these can innovate workflows and how we can create uh, additional layers of security and um, really confidence in uh, what is happening when it comes to that digital dental future um, for our customers and ultimately for the patients that are getting treatment and care. Um, so, kind of following along that line, um, back over to you, Max. Mm -hmm. I think like we've uh, we've definitely spoken a bit about how you know this collaboration is going to impact both of our companies, Google Cloud and Dentspy Serona. But um, I think we want to dive in a little bit more as to how this will impact dentistry as a whole, not just in the form of just you know digitalization of dentistry, but actually for the patients and the treatment and the care, as well as the the capabilities of the people that use these uh, tools and solutions. Um, so yeah, we'd love to get your insight on that. Yeah, thank you, Issa. I think um, the one thing I'll start with is that, you know, I personally believe that dentistry is a difficult job, right? We talk with thousands of dentists. Uh, we supply lots and lots of dental practices with lots of different technologies. And I'm always struck by what a complex job that is, right? You have to deal with complex patient procedures. You have to master sophisticated technology. You really have to also manage an office and you really have to keep learning things. And at the end of the day, you're also a surgeon, right? So there's a lot of complexity in there. And the message that we keep getting back is, guys, can you just help us do this easier, right? So when we went back to the drawing board to say, okay, how can we simplify it? We also said, okay, probably in order to build digital dentistry, much like Google built a lot of the core parts of the internet, we have to build the core of digital dentistry. And that's really about connecting all the different pieces, putting it into one layer together, and seeing what can be done with that data so that it starts making life easier for the dentist, for the lab technician, and ultimately the patient. Right? Because technology should serve the person, 
rather than the person serving the technology. So we're putting the user in the center and saying, hey, how can we bring all the different pieces together and really take dentistry to a next level to make it better, to make it easier, to make it more inclusive for everybody who really needs access to oral health care? Because fundamentally, it's about solving a human health problem. Wow, yeah. I mean, that's really inspiring. And I think like all of us can agree that, you know, the, the mission for both of our companies is really exciting. And I think that that, um, that that process is going to be something that we're going to work with our customers to ultimately create. And to, for you, Urs, I, I feel like you have obviously had a lot of experience in moving things from pretty much ground zero and building them up to, you know, the Google Cloud that we know and love today. It's probably still evolving. But when it comes to the evolution of this collaboration with Denspy Serona, what are you thinking how this will grow? I think, again, there's actually a lot of parallels between, you know, search and dentistry. Um, sounds at first uh, uh, unlikely, but actually there is because these are both very complex problems that are never done, right? So I see this partnership not as a one-time sprint, like let's go from zero to 100 and then we're done, but actually a continuous evolution because we start in the early days, the average sort of digital practice is not actually very digital. So there's a lot of headroom, but actually the key really is to add, to be able to rapidly add new innovations, you know, every month, every quarter, every year, and get to a point where through all of these changes, three years later, you're actually in a very different space, right? But it wasn't one big jump. It was really a lot of smaller jumps. So take, for example, um, you know, let's say x-rays and, and or just imagery and, and we can construct 3D images. Well, you know, that's already very helpful, but maybe we can add on something that says, you know, with ML, we automatically see your gum lines and therefore can, can note recessions without the dentist having to manually uh, enter your, your, you know, your, your tooth state. Or we can, in x-rays, uh, perhaps look for signs of disease in a you know with, with machine learning and actually highlight areas that the dentist should focus on uh, because they're the most likely to, to to have a problem or actually give the patient certain records that makes it easier for them to manage their health and and really be an active part of the process rather than you know visit every six months and then be passive in between right all of these things really depend on understanding the customer and being able to follow them and rapidly deliver new information and deliver it not just to one office, but to all offices, you know, more or less the same the same way. Just like on your phone, you you know, you get an update, and then everyone else has has a newer version of of, of that that application. So I'm I really think this is a long term path and a path that's based on on being able to rapidly add in a secure way uh, new capabilities and and really in the end revolutionize how all of this looks like. And perhaps each step did not look revolutionary, but when you add the steps together, you know, after three or five years, you're like, wow, we have come really, really far. And that actually is really how search evolved. It started with a good idea, but it had an improvement, multiple improvements every month, and it kept getting better and better. And so that's what I think we should shoot for uh, here as well. Yeah, I think the, the, what you've just described sounds completely revolutionary. Um, it really comes down to, you know, just moving the industry from a, a position or a state that it's in now to thinking about things in a new way, actually, and, and solving problems with new solutions and not just with, you know, uh, advancing maybe old processes and trying to make them better. So to that point specifically, Max, um, I know that, you know, there's a lot of things that go into product development, but it really sounds like this collaboration is going to enable uh, a completely new way of developing products and solutions. Can you give us a little bit more insight into that? Absolutely. And you know, there's so many things that I love about what Urs was just saying, right? Because if we really want to develop user-centric solutions, we have to combine expertise from different sources. And digital dentistry is relatively straightforward, right? It's dentistry plus digital. Dance by Sarwana has a tremendous amount of expertise in dentistry, in dental technology. <laughs> Google has shaped digitalization. So putting those two things together already gets you quite far. There's, of course, another ingredient that's really important, and that's the user, the dentist, the dental technician, and also the patient. So we are lucky in the way that 
one of our software development centers is based actually down the road from Google in Zurich. So we really can bring the engineers from the dental side and the engineers from Google together. And we have equipped in our software development center a fully functioning dental practice. So we can actually see how does a dentist do a certain procedure, what sucks about it today, what's really great about it, what would make it easier, so that we can really co-create to create something new. And one of the first things that uh, we are now bringing out is the printer, right? That already has a lot of those elements at its core. Because dentists told us, we don't believe that 3D printing is easy in the industry. And we're like, well, let's see how much easier we can make it, right? So we've thought a lot about what we can automate, how we can avoid dealing with chemicals, how we can make it in a way that a dentist can delegate things to their assistant to make sure that it's connected so that the status of the machine is known, so that we can also implement things like what Urs was saying to say, there should be an automatic update on certain pieces in there, right? You shouldn't constantly have to download things and then say, okay, this is the newest version, but it should be connected and it should just flow. Right. And making it easy and making sure that the technology just flows so that the dentist, the dental technician, and the patient can focus on the actual health issue or the cosmetic issue, that's our North Star. You know, and you brought up a really good point in the fact that, you know, we're starting to approach these things from a holistic perspective, right? Like there is a dentist, there's also a dental technician, there's also a patient. All of these stakeholders are contributing to this singular process. And uh, I think that's like a really good point to, to, to dive into a little bit more. Um, like how do you think that this like, specific collaboration or this development into the future is ultimately going to affect these individual stakeholders? Mm -hmm. So I think, let's keep it relatively simple, right? We said at the beginning, our ambition is to allow a dentist to work any way they please, because any dental practice is different. Mm -hmm. But the tools don't have to be different. They can follow the user. So that's the first part. Really enable the dentist to work that makes the most sense to them. The second thing is that dentist doesn't work in isolation, right? Dentistry is a team sport. So just like we're teaming up with Google to do this, Dentists team up with lab technicians to actually solve the implant procedure, the restoration, or what have you. So it's really also about how can we enable the dental lab to work more easily together with the dentist so that they can also co-create and solve the patient's issue. And through that, the benefit for the patient is greater access to the treatments that they desire and that they deserve. So it's really about creating value for everybody who is involved in this dental universe. Wow. I mean, this all sounds really exciting. And uh, it's really great to see uh, you know, how this collaboration is, is shaping and, and, and how we're thinking about the future in a way that, is, uh, you know, that has the patient and their health needs or their cosmetic needs at the center of everything that we're doing. Um, so specifically to that point, actually, Urs, I, I would love to just hear from just a personal perspective, like what makes you so excited about this collaboration? And you know, why are you so excited to work with uh, Dance by Serona? I mean, I think it's, it's two things. First of all, just from as an engineer, from a technical perspective, this is a very cool problem. It's a, a, a hard problem. It's a new problem, right? It's a new opportunity. And so, you know, engineers love to work on things like that. Uh, but then the second uh, is that, you know, something that, that uh, Don mentioned to me a, a while ago when he said, we uh, help more people have healthy smiles. That is really the mission uh, of all of this. And, you know, it's something that we all can relate to. And I think that's actually incredibly motivational for my team as well, like making our tools better to create an outcome like that. You know, anyone can relate to that. And so if you're working, you know, toiling away on making a database better or some analytics or something, and then you see a use case like this, I, I think that's just, you know, the best thing motivationally for teams to really see what outcomes they can produce together with a partner uh, like Densply uh, Serona. And, and that I think is, is really amazing. I mean, that is something that I think a lot of people will be very uh, happy about. And I don't think you'll have any problem uh, uh, getting people to show up for demos to see really how cloud can make a, a better form of dentistry possible. 
Amazing. So, you know, I, I know I can speak for myself and Max and everyone at Dense by Serona. We're so excited to have you join us on this mission. And like you said, I mean, I think the, it's a noble mission. It's something that, it, that really matters and something that will ultimately uh, impact in, in a positive way the health, not just orally, but actually the full holistic health of an individual. So, Guys, with that being said, I just want to thank you both for being here today, for taking the time to give us some of these insights. It was an absolute pleasure to have you here, Urs. I know it's super early for you over there. We, we see the, the sun slowly rising as you, uh, as you also impart your knowledge on us, which is amazing. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, I just want to thank you guys both for being here and making the time. Thank you, Isa. Thank you, Urs. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Well, that concludes our program for today. I don't know about you, but I had a ton of fun, and I'm really excited for the future of digital dentistry at Dentsply Serona. I want to take a moment to thank all of our wonderful guests who made it from all over the world to join us today. And I also want to thank you, our viewer, for joining us today on such a momentous occasion. Over the course of this program, we spoke about our commitment to do more to support the growth of our customers by creating products and solutions that enable them to become more automated, more productive, more collaborative, and ultimately more connected. Over the next weeks and months, we will continue to elaborate on how we intend to deliver on this promise, all leading up to the launch of our first set of next generation solutions in May. Just click on the link below to register for that event in May. We can't wait to have you join us on this journey to that digital future with Dentsply Serona. Thank you all for making the time today. Can't wait to see you all again soon and have a great day. Goodbye.